The world of the arms trafficker usually feels like something out of a Hollywood film. The life of one of the most well-known and by far the most powerful arms traffickers is similar to a movie itself. Viktor Anatolievich Boot, aka the Merchant of Death, has been involved in many illegal activities that involve smuggling of guns, the assassination of Americans, acquisition, employment of anti-aircraft missiles, and money laundering, among many others. Watch the video till the end and we'll tell you everything you need to know about Victor Boot. The Beginning Born on January 13, 1967, Victor Boot graduated from Moscow's Military Institute of Foreign Languages. Being fluent in six languages that included Russian, Portuguese, English, French, Arabic, and Persian resulted in him being hired as a Soviet military interpreter. The former Cold War warrior rose to prominence as the most renowned gunrunner of the post-Cold War era. Following the disintegration of the former Soviet Union, Boot's Air Force Regiment was disbanded and he began his business in Afghanistan. Boot had access to something that a lot of people sought at that time, military-grade weapons. As the Cold War ended, a vast amount of excess weapons and spare equipment was dumped on the private market, typically at extremely low costs. Boot had the ability to transport not only small weaponry but also large military systems to practically any location on the planet. And his network of friends, which included former U.S. military personnel, Russian officials, African heads of state, and organized criminal leaders, provided him with a long list of customers and vendors. After leaving his services in the Soviet Army with the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1991, Boot started an air freight company by the name of Air Sess. Following the Soviet Union's demise, the company was flying four Antonov AN-8 planes in Angola. Boot's enterprises lawfully delivered flowers, frozen chicken, UN peacekeepers, French soldiers, and African heads of state to the French government, the United Nations, and the United States. The Perfect Cover he oversaw a business that employed 300 people and owned and operated 40 to 60 planes, including the world's largest private fleet of Antonov freight planes. Boot made it nearly impossible to track his activities because of his network of different companies. He was very cautious, and to avoid being directly linked to criminal activities, he even leased his planes to other people and companies. In order to show the company's positive image, Boot's companies assisted the logistics of Operation Restore Hope, the U.S.-led military famine relief effort in Somalia in 1993 by shipping vegetables and crayfish from South Africa to Europe, transporting U.N. peacekeepers from Pakistan to East Timor. Moreover, Boot looked into agricultural and telecommunications investment potential and expressed interest in helping national park conservation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Boot began partnering with Syrian-born Richard Chichakli, in 1993, and Chichakli was hired as the commercial manager of Sharjah International Airport's new free trade zone in the United Arab Emirates in 1995. Boot began exploiting the UAE's free trade zone, and the US dubbed Chichakli Boot's finance manager. Boot is also said to have been involved in armament deals during the Yugoslav Wars, particularly with Bosnian government forces, during the country's rebellion against the Milosevic regime. One of his most famous contacts from the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina was the former Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister Hassan Cenjic. They first met each other during their time in Tehran in the 1990s. The Opportunist In 1995, a Russian plane was captured by the Taliban and Boot was involved in negotiations for the release of the detained crew in Kandahar but they were unsuccessful. After disabling their guards, the seven Russian crew members boarded the Il-76 and flew to Sharjah a year later. However, Boot had already taken advantage of this opportunity by making relations with the Taliban. Boot's reputation soared after he was linked to supplying the Taliban, which provided military support to Al-Qaeda. From being a mere blip on the international community's radar screen since the mid-1990s and operating with impunity for years in Africa's conflict zones, Boot became famous. He started shipping small arms and ammunition into Afghanistan for the pre-Taliban administration, which subsequently became the Northern Alliance. Boot's planes were used to transfer arms and ammunition into the country. However, Boot consistently denied having any ties to Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. Even after the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan, he still emphasized that he had no ties with the Taliban, but instead supported the rebel Northern Alliance. Boot's planes helped Al-Qaeda in transferring gold and cash out of Afghanistan shortly after the 2001-2014 conflict began. Business in Africa Boot moved his business operations to southern Africa after leaving Belgium in 1997. Boot allegedly utilized his knowledge to increase the arms trade in the country. 
He was able to deliver the requisite capacity almost instantly thanks to his numerous contacts in the ex-Soviet Air Force. And in exchange, he was able to make use of the established channels and contacts in the Southern African region. Boot had a $3 million home in Johannesburg's affluent Sandhurst neighborhood that could easily have been mistaken for a prison while he was there. The property was encircled by five-meter-high walls with electrified fences on top. The grounds were monitored by armed guards with machine guns and dogs, and daily security costs exceeded what most South Africans earn in a year. The complex however, was not a prison. There were two swimming pools, a beautiful guest house, cascading ponds, and a number of tropical plants encircling the main home within the boundaries of the leisure class. Between 1996 and 1998, Bulgarian arms manufacturing companies started making headlines for exporting large quantities of various types of weapons on the basis of forged certificates from Togo, and with the help of Victor Boot's company Air Cess, which was the main transporter of these weapons from Burgas Airport in Bulgaria. International Arrest Warrant Belgian police filed an international arrest notice for him through Interpol in February of 2002, following allegations of money laundering and criminal conspiracy from agencies. At the time, the United Arab Emirates, which served as his major base of operations, informed the United Nations that his firms were now not permitted to operate there, and that Boot was also barred from entering the country. He was also accused of selling weapons to a number of African armed groups in the 2000s, primarily during the Second Congo War in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Boot was allegedly observed meeting with Hezbollah officials in Lebanon prior to the 2006 Lebanon War, but some accounts indicate he was really in Russia at the time. British intelligence officials told then-Libyan intelligence chief Musa Kusa in late September 2003 that Boot had a significant commercial presence in Libya and aimed to expand his interests there, according to records found in Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi's former intelligence headquarters in Tripoli shortly after the Gaddafi government was overthrown in 2011. In view of all the problems and allegations, it was getting hard to launder the money, so Boot and Chichakli established Samar Airlines in Tajikistan in 2004 to perform money laundering and asset protection from authorities. The Cunning Plan Boot is thought to have lived in a number of countries throughout his purported operations, including Belgium, Lebanon, Rwanda, Russia, South Africa, Syria, and the United Arab Emirates. Boot's tactic of continuously changing locations, owning multiple companies, and repeatedly re-registering planes made it difficult for investigators to build a case against him. The authorities were not able to charge Boot in connection with the alleged African arms trade that brought him fame. After years of evading authorities, Boot was arrested on the 6th of March 2008 by the Royal Thai Police in Bangkok, Thailand, based on an Interpol red alert. Agents from the Drug Enforcement Administration orchestrated the sting operation as they asked for a big arms deal, and Boot offered to provide guns to individuals he believed were revolutionary armed forces of Colombia insurgents. On September 22, 2008, the criminal court in Bangkok opened an extradition hearing for Boot after months of delay. Members of Congress signed a letter to Attorney General Eric Holder and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in February of 2009, expressing their desire for the Boot extradition to remain a key priority extradition. The Bangkok Criminal Court found in his favor on August 11, 2009, refusing the U.S. request for extradition and citing the case as political rather than criminal in nature. The United States appealed the decision, and on August 20, 2010, a higher Thai court found that Boot could be extradited to the United States. Boot was extradited from Thailand to the United States on November 16, 2010, despite Russian government complaints, which deemed the decision as illegitimate. The Thai court judgment in 2010 was dubbed as politically motivated by Russia. The country's foreign ministry made steps to prevent Boot from being extradited to the United States. Sergei Lavrov, Russian's foreign minister, suggested Boot was innocent. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev's advisor, Sergei Prokhodko, stated on November 18, 2010, immediately after Boot's extradition to the United States, that Russia has nothing to hide in Boot's criminal case. Boot was famously suspected of assisting Russian intelligence agencies and of having ties to high-ranking Russian officials, including former Deputy Prime Minister Igor Sechin. The Sentence After a proper hearing, Boot was found guilty by a jury in a Manhattan court on November 2, 2011. He was sentenced to 25 years in jail on April 5, 2012 the bare minimum for conspiring to sell weapons to a U.S.-designated foreign terrorist group. The minimal sentence was reasonable as there was no evidence available that proved that Boot committed the offenses for which he was convicted. Considering the life of Victor Boot, it is not a surprise that he is the subject of numerous books, movies, and documentaries. Boot's personal history and black market activities were allegedly modeled in the 2005 film Lord of War that starred Nicolas Cage. 
Boot was also the subject of a book written by Stephen Braun and Douglas Farah in 2007 called Merchant of Death, Money, Guns, Planes, and The Man Who Makes War Possible. Boot is also a part of Nick Cochan's 2005 book which is titled Merchant of Death. The notorious Mr. Boot was also the center of attention in a documentary by Market Road Films, directed by Tony Gerber, that had its world premiere at the 2014 Sundance Film Festival. We hope you enjoyed the content of our video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more of these amazing videos.